All right, so I know the title of this video, Groups of Cookies, got you really excited and you thought I was actually gonna bake cookies, but I'm a terrible baker, so we're gonna use these little number cubes instead. All right, so our problem is if we have five groups of six cookies, how do we find that? And we all know that this is gonna be six times five, but sometimes when kids are counting five groups of six, they do it in an interesting way. So I have my helper here, this is a, a newly graduated first grader, so he's going into second grade, and he's gonna show us, you know, how we're adding six to six to six. All right, what is six plus six, Eli? 12. All right, 12 plus six? Okay. Yeah, a little bit harder, right? Ooh, 18 plus six. 24, and then 24 plus six? 30. Okay, now that took them a little bit. That was a hard thing and a lot of, you know, first graders will have a lot of trouble with that. So here's a trick I'm going to show you. It's called the commutative property. So let's say these are our different types of cookies. So we have chocolate chip, peanut butter, snickerdoodle, yummy, um, oatmeal, and icing cookies. Okay, so we have our different types of cookies and we've made these. We're bakers and we've made all these cookies. And we don't wanna just give people a box of all the same cookies, because what if you really don't like oatmeal cookies? You know, my husband, Mr. Cox, really likes oatmeal cookies, but a lot of people don't like them. So we wanna give them an assortment. So here's what we're gonna do, Eli, you ready? We get one chocolate chip, one peanut butter, one snickerdoodle, one oatmeal, one icing cookie, and we put them in a box. And we take this and we create another mixed assortment. And we put them in a box. And then we take the next box and we put one from each one in there and we continue this process. So this is how we teach our elementary ed teachers to talk about this property at IU. And so we keep moving things over and we're creating our mixed assortment and then we have our final assortment. So previously we had five groups of six, but now we have, how many groups, Eli? Six, six groups of? Five. Now, is that easier for you to add? Can you count by fives? So this is a great property for kids to use, the commutative property. So if you have, for example, something like uh, 11 groups of seven, counting by sevens is hard. Seven, 14, oh man, what comes back? What comes after that? That's a lot. But if I can say seven groups of 11, 11, 22, 33, 44, 55, 66, 77, much easier. So moving things around can be really useful. So I'm gonna show you how this works, not only with uh, numbers, but also with percentages as well. All right, thank you. So we just learned that the commutative property allows us to move our items and our groups. So in other words, five groups of six can be rearranged into six groups of five in the way that we just did. So sometimes changing the structure of this problem makes it easier for kids to count if they're new with their multiplication facts. So as a recap, we took cookies and we put them in different um, boxes. So this one shows that if we had three groups of five, it's really the same as five groups of three. So if kids knew how to count by threes, this would be good for them to do. But it's just nice to see that we can change the structure. So some of you might be wondering, okay, this is great for first and second graders, but what about middle school students, high school students, even adults? So here's what I'm gonna show you today, percentages. So remember, per cent, cent means 100, right? So we have dollars and cents, we have century. Um, this stem, cent, means 100. So 25% really means 25 over 100. So if we're finding 25% of 4,000, we find 25 over 100 times 4,000, and you can kind of reduce out the fractions. So I would take the 4,000 divided by 100, right? And so I would see that I had 40 times 25, I could do it that way, or I could reduce my fraction 25 over 100 and make it 1 fourth. And 1 fourth times 4,000 is 1,000. So we can get that right away. Some of you like to use decimals. It doesn't matter how you find this. But here's the cool thing. You can do percentages using the commutative property. So we know 12% of 3,000 is 12 over 100 times 3,000, and we can rearrange fractions. So we can make this 3,000 over 100 times um, 12 instead. 
which is really 3,000% of 12. So 12% 12 of 3,000 is really the same as 3,000% of 12. What? So if I wanted you to find 12% of 25, this means that you could find 25% of 12, which we know is 1 fourth, 1 fourth of 12. Oh, that's three. Right away, you can get it. Or 6% of 50, we could actually find 50% of six. What? 50% of six? Well, that's easy. That's three. So you can switch percentages around because really what you're doing is you're using the commutative property with fractions. Crazy. All right, hopefully you use this fun fact. Uh, good luck with percentages in the future.